Good evening, Twitch. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to Birth of a World. So, new year and a few changes. Namely, I've got video now. Um, so, hopefully that's working. Uh, you'll be able to actually see me talking now, instead of just having to stare at my text editor. Uh, if you are following along in chat, I'm going to post, or will have just posted, a link to tonight's Google Doc. Um, it's available there in chat or via the links uh, underneath the video. If you're watching this on YouTube later, uh, that will be posted in the video description down below. I see someone's already watching up here. So that's cool. Um, today is a monster making episode. Um, as I promised a couple months ago, we're, I'm doing monthly, uh, roughly once a month, I'm taking a piece of artwork from my friend C. Hillier 17's uh, menagerie of monsters, if you will, uh, and building stats for it. So today uh, we're going to be building a 5th edition stat block for a new monster. Uh, and those of you who are watching on the Google Doc can follow along with the text if you want to. Um, as always, this any, for anyone new, this is... Oh, not getting sound. Um, just a second. Okay, apparently there's just slight technical difficulty on uh, one of my listeners. Um, so, uh, for anyone new to the show, this is an interactive podcast. Uh, you're encouraged to ask questions, and I will also be asking the chat for advice uh, from time to time as we go through building out this monster today. Um, without any further messing around, let's take a look at the beastie we've got to work with. So this guy is called the Nightmare Catcher. Uh, this is, a, again, a creation by a friend, Sea Hillier 17. Uh, this is what we're going to be making a stat block for today. It looks pretty fearsome, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to pull this out here. And uh, I'll stick this over in the over off to the side so we can look at it while we're working. Uh, like so. There. Okay, now we got something to look at while we're working on it. So yeah, this is called the Nightmare Catcher. Uh, feeling I got, kind of the vibe I've got for this piece of art, uh, is kind of as something that lurks in the shadows and maybe um, I'm picturing it as more of kind of a, a boss type monster rather than the kind of thing you'd you know encounter three or four of over the course of an adventure. Uh, so let's start writing some stuff down. So for a boss monster, obviously, we want to be able to uh, make this guy memorable. So I'm just adjusting my chair here a bit. Uh, we want to make this guy memorable. We're going to give him some unique abilities, some stuff that's kind of off the wall out there uh, to really make him a threat. Because, I mean, it looks really menacing. Like, we've got... So let, let, let's look at the pieces that we've got here. Obviously, we've got the, the Dreamcatcher type um, piece here at the top. Um, uh, we've got the Dreamcatcher piece, and we also have this, like, unseen body, right? We just have a gaping mouth on the bottom here. We don't know what the rest of the creature's body even looks like. <laughs> Those are kind of some of the, el the descriptive elements we can work with. Uh, <coughs> so let's talk... So, I mean, let's talk a bit about the Dreamcatcher element, I feel like. Let's, let's start with talking about that, try and come up with kind of a theme. We want to come up with a theme for what this guy is going to be like, so that as we, um, as we build him out, we can kind of follow along these themes to give us a, a guidance for what to do. Uh, already, uh, Ripster over in the chat is suggesting maybe it has a uh, smoke-like body. Uh, so made of a body that's made of smoke or vapor rather than actually having a physical form. That's a possibility. Uh, so I have to get used to actually doing my bullet list that way. Okay, let's talk about Dreamcatcher though. I feel like so so I I've I've looked at this art a bit before, so I've got a few pre-made ideas. Um, but again, if uh, chat if you got ideas for what to do uh, that you think are that you want to suggest, feel free to throw them out there and we can discuss. Uh, but kind of what I'm going for. Is kind of um, I'm just going to write that out there. It, it feeds on fear. 
Uh, so basically, it, it, it causes nightmares and like. <coughs> so I think I feel like it causes nightmares to get kind of the fear out to kind of to squeeze the fear out of uh, a population and then consumes that or feeds on that that kind of miasma, that kind of unsettled, unnatural energy uh, in order to, to sustain itself and to grow and things like that. <clears throat> so I want to go like really primal and really kind of go deep into the horror tropes with this thing, I think, a bit. So the idea, right, is that it, it, it's eating the fear out of your nightmares. Yeah, like Freddy. Kind of, kind of a Freddy Krueger type situation going on here. Um, I feel like this could probably... Uh, let's go. Let's take this out, actually. I want to say that on the scale of things, this can, like, afflict an entire town. So the idea is a uh, nightmare catcher could uh, come in, could like set up shops somewhere near a town, maybe like in a cave or in someone's basement. I, I don't really know yet. Um, lurk there in the darkness, lurk in the dark and uh, cause nightmares throughout the entire town. So it's got quite wide reaching uh, effects for this nightmares thing. Sorry, nose is a bit itchy. Um, has wide-reaching effects for this nightmares thing uh, that it can then use to feed on itself. And, you know, up to a certain population size, uh, maybe no one can resist it. Um, so that's kind of, those are kind of the themes that we're going for, and we can uh, move along further as we work with them. Uh, but we can start talking about what kind of monster type this is. I don't know why I do that. No, not that either. Um, so for what monster type this is going to be, my thinking was that it would probably be a aberration. Uh, an aberration type. So for anyone who uh, is new to monster making, I'll read you the quick description of what an aberration is. <clears throat> Aberrations are utterly alien beings. Many of them have innate magical abilities drawn from the creature's alien mind rather than mystical forces of the world. The quintessential aberrations are aboliths, beholders, mind flayers, and sladi. Um, so when you think of, like, beholder is kind of a classic one you might have seen before. I don't have a piece of art handy, but basically it's, you know, it's a floating eyeball body type thing with a bunch of stalks like tendrils sticking out of it that also have eyes and it shoots beams out of them and uh, is generally horrible. Um, this guy seems practically related because you can't see his body. It's just a face with an eye. Um, so I think it definitely fits pretty strongly into the aberration category. Um, and that also works nicely with the idea that its effects aren't strictly magical. The effects, effects are more part of its supernatural uh, Right, it's not putting a, it's not putting a hex on the village. It is basically just showing up and feeding. It's doing what it does. It's 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 its own supernatural power, uh, rather than you know a constructed spell. Um, so that's kind of that's aberrations for you. Uh, unlike in Pathfinder, where um, so I think the last version I did was. Uh, the last one I did was, um, I lost my train of thought completely. Just, sorry. So the last, I did an aberration before, and I think I used the Pathfinder rules for it. So this time we're using 5th edition, which means that just being an aberration doesn't actually give it any specific stats to start with. Um, so if you've been following me along, you'll notice that this is going to go a bit differently. Um, so aberration, uh, how big is it going to be? Can we have some suggestions from the chat? Um, 
about how big uh, do we think this is going to be. Uh, I'll wait for the chat lag to catch up. Uh, can I scroll down and start looking? So. Got this kind of blank uh, stat block here that I set up beforehand so that we can talk about it a bit. Okay, chat, how big is this guy? How big is this thing? I'm thinking it's probably, I don't know, it can go either way because its body is, is unseen, right? Its body's not really part of the art. Uh, Ripster suggests maybe the mask has a set size, but maybe the smoky body can differ uh, from the size of a person much larger. No, I like that. That's a good idea. I, I like that. So, uh, I actually like the idea that's kind of a floating mask with almost a port. Actually, how about this? How about this? So we've got uh, we've got this kind of the face itself is just uh, more or less a floating mask, and inside it's like a like a portal almost. It to you know it's just like it opens its mouth and there's you know a throat and stuff like that. You can see uh, it opens its mouth and there's a throat, but otherwise it's you know just kind of this floating hail tiki kind of mask thing uh, coming around. Uh, and being scary, but I do like the smoke cloud though still. So I think we can definitely do something with that there, Ripster. Um, line art suggests he sees the teeth at a few inches. Um, and uh, so we can put the, so technically if it's just the mask, just the mask part, you know, that's gonna be, uh, that would make it probably tiny, um, but then it has the smoke effect, uh, which could be useful for a much uh, kind of a bigger, so I'm going to say So we're going to say the mask itself is tiny and it kind of floats within this cl this persistent cloud of uh, darkness that it produces from itself. I like that actually. And that can go into our first uh, section of special abilities, which is um, um, oh yeah, I'll put the monster's name in because uh, I, I do just want to call it a nightmare catcher. So the darkness cloud uh, is going to be. So is it just going to be darkness, you think, or do we want to have actually be actually be smoke also? Because we can like take the darkness effect. Um, so darkness basically just takes light away; it reduces the brightness level of the area uh, affected. Um, you know, turns torchlight into just darkness, turns bright light into dim torchlight. Um, Lineart is also suggesting the ability to make it appear larger than it is. So I want to get back to that Lineart because I think. Uh, in addition to its primary effect, the, the causing nightmares uh, and feeding on dr dreams, uh, we're going to have to give it some more uh, tactical effects uh, that can go around it. So things that it will actually do to player characters uh, when they try and kill this thing. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a very strong kind of lots of mind affecting vibe coming off of this guy. 
So maybe make it appear larger than it is. Maybe that's as part of you know how it manifests a, a fear creating ability or something like that. Uh, might be a thing we can do. Um, so hold on a second. I want to look something up quickly in uh, ye olde PHP. Um, I want to look up to see if what deeper darkness looks like in fifth ed. Um, for those who don't know, we only recently started playing 5th edition uh, in my normal group here. We had a live stream on New Year's Day, actually, which was the first time a bunch of us actually got to playing it. Darkness. Okay, so... It's a 15-foot radius sphere. Bah, we'll make that bigger. Okay, we don't actually have a deeper darkness version here right now, so that's unfortunate. But we can make up something. So, I also pull up Obscuring Mist, which is a... I think we're going to probably combine darkness with obscuring mist to get something not entirely unlike deeper darkness. Mm -hmm. um, oops, gone too far now. Seriously, wizards, please, please give me something I can search online so I don't have to do this. You make beautiful books, but... I... Okay, so we're just going to wing it. Uh... Um. So, um, here's basically what darkness does. I'm just going to spell it out for everyone. And we've added, basically, an obscuring uh, effect to it. So, it creates this cloud of black vapor around itself, uh, out to a radius of about 30 feet. Uh, it obscures vision very severely, makes it so basically ranged weapons will be useless, uh, and it dims the light level, so it makes it seem darker when you're inside it. Um... So that's what we're going for here, with the darkness and mist thing. Um, so what else are we going to do? So that's the darkness bit. Uh, we decided so it's tiny, but it has this very, very large darkness effect that it produces around it. Uh, and I am going to call this... What are we going to do for alignment? So I, I want to give it... I don't know. It's a... It's... I'm just going to throw chaotic neutral out there, and uh, we can hear what you guys think. I don't, I don't know if it should be definitely evil. I'm always hesitant to make things definitely evil because paladins. Uh, what the hell? Let's make it chaotic evil. So this thing just wants to eat your fear, dude, and that's all it cares about. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. So we've got this darkness cloud. Um, let's give it some actual offensive abilities as well. So I was thinking, given we got a dream theme going here, uh, maybe just the ability to cast sleep, uh, kind of as a as a, an ability rather than using the spell. So uh, sleep, for those who don't know, is a uh, radius effect, so it can hit a uh, Picture your, your whole party of adventurers attacking him, right? And you get all within, like, a nice tight space, and then it does this thing. Maybe it, it sighs or something, does something, and causes you all to fall... Uh, generally, a number, of hit, a number of hit dice worth of characters to fall asleep. And I think we're going to do that here, too, so... Um... Let's see here. So we want. Um, let's see, sorry, sorry about the noise. My my fiance is here. Uh, so let's pull up monster manual and look quickly for a similar ability here. Uh, just remember the way they always want to write these things. Let's pick a good one. Give me stat block. Why am I in the middle of a page full of devils? 
because uh, I'm still not, still have not been using fifth edition long enough to be 100% used to it yet. Okay, so let's do this. Um, uh, so the So here's what I'm thinking for the sleep spell, basically. Normally sleep lasts for a number of minutes, but since it's gonna be using this thing in the heat of combat, uh, and we don't, want to take, we don't want to take player characters out of combat for too long, because it sucks if you get your character just taken out of combat because you've been put asleep. Uh, actually, no, here's what we can do. We can just give it away to... Damage breaks the effect. Uh, so, um, here's basically a, a, a distillation of the sleep spell. Let's make this a bit meaner. So what we're gonna ha what's gonna happen when this goes off in combat? Let's think about what's gonna go on. So you're gonna wade into the cloud. Your melee characters, especially, uh, are gonna get into that cloud, and then this thing is gonna go <sighs> or whatever it does. Um, kind of like I'm thinking almost like bad breath from like Final Fantasy, you know, the kind of effect. Um, and everything in the darkness cloud suddenly starts getting very sleepy, and you have to make a wisdom save, uh, or fall into a nightmare-riddled sleep for up to five minutes. Uh, and what's going to happen is the high wisdom characters are going to make this save, and they'll have to kick awake the low wisdom characters, like the like the fighters and stuff like that. They're going to have to go in and shake them awake uh, so that they can continue kind of fighting this thing. It's going to be very hard. Uh, to be a melee martial class in kind of against this thing, um, which is good because we want this to be a boss fight. We want it to be hard. Um, so there's that. What other kind of abilities uh, do we think we can throw onto this thing um, before we start talking about what its challenge rating is actually going to be? Uh, we talked about... Uh, yeah, it should have an attack of some kind. I kind of want to give just the mask a bite, like it just kind of chomp chomp. I don't, I don't know if it would ever actually use it, but it's always good to have a, a kind of a fallback melee attack. Um. Uh. Uh. Bite is slashing damage. It's tiny, but I don't care. It's getting a, you know, it gives d4. Probably plus zero. I don't see this being a very strong thing. In which case, that would make it three damage uh, average, based on the half plus one rule. Um, let's say melee weapon. Melee, uh, a melee natural weapon attack. Um, I'm expecting, yeah, that's not going to have very much in the way of strength, uh, but again, we'll do its stats once we have to worry about uh, what its challenge rating is actually going to be. Uh, it flies. I'm going to give it fly and make it slightly faster than uh, average party character. So it can fly with a speed of 40 feet, so it can get away. 
uh, which I think is also useful for boss monster, especially if this is kind of just a natural roaming predator. Uh, it should be fast, so let's do that. Uh, any other suggestions from the chat for abilities for this guy or for actions that it can do? So far, it can put you to sleep and it can bite. I can think of one other thing it has to be able to do, um, which is... So we talked... Actually, we talked about it. Sorry, we missed this. We were going to say uh, we were going to make it have a fear ability. That was something Lineart suggested, so... Um, conditions quickly. So in other editions of D&D, &D, and I suspect this one as well, uh, there's like a continuum of fear abilities. There's like a levels of afraidness, if you will. Um, I'm guessing it's in the PHB. It might be in the DMG, but uh, just bear with me here a second while I hit the books. Um, do, 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 do. Conditions. Yep. Appendix A, 290. There we go. Sure, I'm paying the home game. This is on page 290, apparently, right after all the spells. So what happens is there's usually different levels of fear. So frightened, restrained, stunned, unconscious. Actually, they cut it down quite a bit. Okay. They, they dialed it back quite a bit from Pathfinder, um, which is cool. So we have frightened as our, as our one we can go by here. Uh, frightened, a frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks. The creature can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. That's what I was looking for, actually, is it makes you back away. Um. So, you have to succeed on a wisdom score or become frightened. And now for the, 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 the icing on the cake. Um. Using its feeding ability uh, to put to do damage, presumably. Um. Uh. And I'm going to make this. I can make this even meaner, and I can make this a uh, legendary action. Uh, so, legendary actions, um, just a quick explanation. This is something that's new that was added for 5th edition. Uh, basically, what it means is it's a, it's a cheat, if you will. The monster can cheat. Uh, I will look up the horror ability, Ripster, in just a second. Thank you. Um, so, legendary actions are basically uh, the monster can cheat a bit and break the usual, you know, standard or bonus action kind of thing. And this is just a thing it can do on its turn, basically, is... Um, uh, use consume fear. So on its turn, that your creature can uh, it's a legendary action once per round. Okay, creature. So once you're, oh, thank you, Ripster. You even got the, the DMG page number. That's very helpful. So once you're, uh, once you're asleep or afraid of this thing, it starts eating your brain. Um, it actually deals honest to God psionic damage and can kill you with it. Uh, 266. Thank you, Ripster. You're very helpful.
fear and horror. Okay. So what Ripster is talking about in chat here, horror involves more than simple fright. It entails revulsion and anguish. It often arises when adventurers see something completely contrary to the common understanding of what can or should be in the world. Oh, this is very aberration. I'm loving it. Um, there was a... Uh, uh, in the world or upon realization of a dreadful truth. In such a situation, you can call on characters to make a charisma saving throw to resist horror. See the DC based on the magnitude of horrific circumstances. On a, f on a failed save, the character gains a short-term or long-term form of madness that you can choose or determine randomly as detailed in the running of the game. So, cool. I'm just going to say, cool, I want to check out quite how bad this madness can be, because this might be spicier than I was expecting, but we can always up the uh, challenge rating and go for it. I'm going the wrong way. 258. See, this is why I love doing this as an interactive show, because I learn so much from listening to you guys. Uh, from reading what you have to say. Okay, uh, 258... No, hold on. Yeah, 58, 59. Going mad. Madness. Short-term madness. The character retreats into his or her mind and becomes paralyzed. The effect ends if the character takes any damage. Pretty close. Um, comes incapacitated or spends the duration screaming. Li Ooh, I'm liking this. So there's frightened right in here, which is, you know, using your turn to move, but it forcing you to move away. Um... But I don't think you want to move your way because you want to be putting you to sleep and eating that fear. So yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the horror effect there, um, Ripster. I'm gonna say you become incapacitated and spend uh, some time screaming until someone. Uh, we give it a duration and you spend that time just screaming in terror. Uh, I think that'll be great. So let's do. And then we want, oh yeah, and another, another important thing. This is a typical thing that you do for fear effects is if you're not affected by the fear, it usually can't affect you again for a day. You're like, you're over this fear for that time. Um, Uh, yeah, madness goes pretty deep. The, the worst effects are like character altering or a character altering experience. Like you have a religiously terrifying experience and come back a different person. Um, that kind of fear is a bit much. I'll see. Um, okay. So I think we've got a nice set of abilities here that really drive the flavor home. It makes it nighttime all around it. It can put you to sleep or it can make you vomit yourself inside out with absolute fear basically you cower on the floor and do nothing but scream i know some characters who will rp and actually just scream continuously on their turn while affected by something like this it's like the entire time it's their turn which will be short because that's all they're doing uh they'll just be standing there screaming <laughs> at me uh so that's a thing that happens um let's make this i want to say Uh, I'm going to make it 1d4 plus 1 rounds. Uh, you know, again, we don't want to... Because this, this is taking characters out of the fight, right? This is incapacitating a player character. Um, so if you... So you don't want to do it for too long because it's not fun. Uh, it's not fun, right? If you if you're, have your player character who's taken out of the fray for too long. So we don't want to do that. We want to have uh, it... 
be something that lasts long enough to hurt, but not long enough to uh, seriously break your mind or you know make the game make the battle not fun. Plus, once they get out of it, I can do it to them again because I can do this once per round, potentially if I'm not casting sleep. Okay, we should probably take a look at its stats. I think. Um, it's gonna, this is a purely mental creature, I wanna say, so it's probably not very strong at all. I'm just gonna give it like some rather large strength penalties. Uh, probably give it an okay-ish deck score just cause it's a big floaty, it's a, it's a floaty thing. Two is like what, minus six? Uh, ah. mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm doing it in my head here. Eight, six, four, two, minus four. Minus five. There we go. Okay, um, I'm going to keep its dex even. It's con. We'll worry about that when we get to what its hit points are going to be. It's intelligence. I want this thing to be smart. Uh, I want this, uh, like, basically across the board, I think it's going to have high uh, mental stats. So we can give it, like, 16, 18, 16, or something like that. Basically, you are not going to... Actually, I... I want this to be abundantly clear, you are not going to win it in a battle of minds. So let's just pump this way the hell up. Um, seems like a rather high number. Uh, that's a plus three. And ditto, strong will. So, um, did I do that right? 16, 18, 20. Nope, no I didn't. Okay, um, there we go. I can math, really I can. Uh, so yeah, we'll worry about its dex and con when we worry about uh, what its armor class and whatnot need to be. Um, we might also make it proficient in saving throws just to further hammer the point home. Uh, so, challenge rating. What level do we have to be to fight this thing, guys? Uh, we'd love to hear some input from the chat. Uh, Ripster, your input's always welcome, but if anyone else wants to chime in, please don't uh, be discouraged. This is an interactive podcast, uh, and everyone's encouraged to participate if you've got something you want to add. So how big are we going? Line art, Ripster, anyone? What are we thinking? Leinart's commenting that its charisma is high despite how horrifically, how visually horrific it is. Yes, that's true, but charisma is your ability to influence others. Uh, so, um, you know, it's a thing that gets in your mind, so I think it's going to have high charisma by virtue of it being able to influence you uh, magically rather than it being so beautiful you can't turn away kind of thing. So we want Leinart suggesting a challenge rating of 16 or up. I, I like the sound of that. Uh, if anyone else wants to contribute, we can make it a discussion, but otherwise I'm going to put in 16. That's right, Abernaki. Charisma is not just physical attractiveness, it's persuasiveness, and you can do that by being beautiful or by doing a bunch of other things. Okay, so I'm using the tables here from the DMG for this, so its proficiency bonus is going to be plus 5. I'm going to further hammer home that you cannot beat this thing at wisdom. Uh, by making it proficient with its wisdom save, which means its wisdom save is now plus 11, um, which is hilarious and fun. Um, uh, so let's see, its attack bonus then uh, is gonna be plus zero actually, because that gives us a uh, proficiency is plus five, but its strength is minus five, so that comes up to zero. Recommended AC for something that's around this level is 18. Uh, we can fudge that a bit if we think we need to. Uh, 18 seems reasonable though, I don't see this, oh yeah, hold on, we probably have to, need to apply a size modifier to this, don't we? Um, because it is tiny, which, no, actually we don't have that anymore apparently. Never mind, 5th edition doesn't have size modifiers apparently, um, at least not for uh, armor class, if what I'm reading is correct. 
Hit points, we want something in the two nine in the two fifty to three ten range. Uh, this is gonna be a boss fight though, so we're probably gonna push that a bit higher. I'm gonna give it three fifty, which is uh, suitable for basically a couple CR points up. Uh, basically grabbing a hit point total from considerably higher. Um, basically what we're going to do here is going to give it extra hit dice. Um, so let's see here. Do, 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 do. I'm going to calculate her out. Uh, 21 hit points per uh, point of challenge rating which is fine, we'll probably give it a higher con score and I guess we'll give it a d10 for a hit die. So, uh, so let's figure out what we can do here. I like making them, uh, so uh, just I an mean, important note about when you're making monsters, right? It doesn't all have, to, the math doesn't have to add up perfectly. Um, you know, you, it's fine to start with a number and then reverse engineer uh, what you want for the monster to actually have in the end or to actually build it up step by step by the book and you wind up with some number. Either way is fine. Like we just, we pulled its uh, armor class just straight out of the book based on its challenge rating. That's cool. Or we could say, I want it to be this hard to hit and then see where that falls in the challenge rating spectrum. You can go either way is what I'm saying. Uh, in this case, hit points are annoying, especially for bosses. You have to know how many hit die they have because some things hit care about how many hit die. Uh, but ultimately you can just kind of reverse engineer it and say, you know, it's probably got a hit dice. Uh, it's probably got a hit die per challenge rating if I remember how this worked correctly. Da, 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 da. Just double checking here. Yeah, the number of hit die matching up to the expected challenge rating. So if I were to give it, um, 16 times 5.5 is 88, and then we need to come up with a con score that would boost that up there. But honestly, I basically don't care. Um, or we can give it some extra hit die and call it even, even like 18 d10. Uh, so, gives us 99. So we got 250, which would give us a con, a con bonus of plus 15 per level. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to say it has 18 D10 plus stuff. And stop worrying about it because I'm the TM and this is what you're fighting, damn it. Um, doesn't always have to add up. Uh, we'll give it a decent con score anyway. Because, so, I mean, it has to have a con score, obviously, to still have a saving throw. And we can give it a, a fairly large con score. Like, we can say, you know, uh, we can give it, hell, let's give it like an 18, I guess. Ah! This is just for the saving throw. Uh, we can give it a decent, we can give it a high con score. Dex, I don't, I don't even care about the dexterity, honestly, but I can think it's going to be pretty fast. This thing is a physical, is a really high physical stats, um, which is nice, I think. Um, I'm going to make up that it's quick, and that's why it's got such high AC, um, is it's deft. So that would be many. Uh, let's give this a 16 plus 3. And then it's also made of wood, so that we can say that contributes to some of its armor class. Done. Um, I'm not going to make it proficient in any other saves. Uh, so let's see, what else do we need to do here? Challenge rating 16. Oh yes, we need to come up with the difficulty classes for its abilities. Recommended save DC for a challenge rating 16 enemy is an 18. 18 wisdom save. I think that suits us just fine. What do you guys think? Can you hit an 18 when you're level uh, 16 on a saving throw? See, remember, it's a saving throw, right? Um, you're, I mean, you can obviously hit it, but it's still pretty unlikely. I'm going to make the single target one actually harder. I'm going to make this a 20, which is, again, swinging 
much higher above its um, it's swinging way above its pay grade now basically uh, when it decides to make you scream in horror you are going to sit there and scream in horror and piss yourself um, and lastly damage this is its primary attack per round and it's going to be pretty cheap because it's, it can do this every round regardless of what else it does and because it's very good at getting it. So we want to actually make this one be a bit conservative on this here. Uh, so we want, according to, again, by the challenge rating, we want about 100 damage per round. What? <laughs> so apparently we want about 100 damage per round. Uh... So um, that's the one thing I've noticed about fifth edition is the levels go up, is the numbers go up way faster, especially for HP and damage. So apparently we're looking to do about 100 damage per round. I'm interested in how we're going to do that. Um, uh, damage range into a single die expression, yada yada. Um, Can you imagine a creature having it? Let's see what higher levels. It always gets a bit harder here. Um, so, let's see. Oh, stream froze for a second. Okay, sorry about that. So, how are we going to hit 100 damage per round easily? Um, I feel like we want it to be kind of swingy. Maybe it can just hit really, really hard sometimes. Uh, it can hit up to that high. I don't know. I'm not used to building monsters quite this high on the challenge rating, I have to admit. Um, but this, So, this is a fun challenge. Uh... Deal damage with a single attack, choose the damage based on, yeah. If you want damage output to vary slightly from round to round, translate it into a single die expression. Uh, for challenge rating 2 monster, deals 15 to 20 damage per round. If you imagine the creature having a strength of 18, you can give it a melee attack of 3d8, yeah. So, I mean, we could just give it, like, I want it to be a fairly sizable plus, I think. So we can do it, like, uh... What's our minimum? So we want to deal about 100 damage, but we want it to be kind of swingy. So we can do... Uh, we want it to top out at the high end at like 110. It's going to max out at. Uh, choking gas, also. <sighs> oh boy. Yeah, we also do have to come up with the... Uh, we should boost this up a bit, too. Uh, one thing we do add actually is its proficiency bonus. No, we don't. Ah, uh, do we? Yeah, we do. Sorry, um, we do add its proficiency bonus to damage, I believe, because um, it helps with damage scaling. If not, what the hell? Just throw a plus five in there. Uh, so yeah, choking gas. I. I think this is good enough. I don't know. The, the choke. I like to keep it mostly a mental thing uh, rather than the choking gas. Obviously, if you want to, you can throw choking gas on this too. I think now is as good a time to mention as any that this is that this creature stat block at least is Creative Commons, and you can go use it however you want um, in your own campaigns afterwards. You just have to give uh, me too many knives or Rob Hicks credit, um, and obviously, please don't rip off Line Arts artwork. Uh, so we want to do, let's make this like, God, what is a good number here? I, wanted, I like fistfuls of D6s. I don't know about you guys. Do we like fistfuls of D6s? So if we do like, say maybe, um, so we want to hit up to 110. So let's say we do, we give it like a bonus of plus... 40, I don't know, I guess so. So its minimum is going to be around around 40, 50 damage. Um, so that means we can do up to 70 of that in dice. You know what, let's make it, let's make it uh, 10d6 
plus, um, so that's 60 plus 50. That is a scary thing. Those are scary numbers. I don't usually deal with stuff with challenge rating this high. That's really cool. Um, so 10d6 plus 50 sonic damage. So apparently this thing kills people every night when it eats their brains, uh, which is kind of nice. I feel like this thing tells us a pretty good story now. I feel like we've got this to a pretty good place. Um, you know, it sets up, it sets up shop. So, so picture, picture the story hook here, right? You hear about this small town, uh, where everyone's going crazy and some people are dying in their sleep. Very, very, you know, um, Friday the 13th kind of, you know, Freddy Krueger films type stuff. You know, people are going crazy and dying in their sleep. Um, so you, the, our stalwart heroes step into town to investigate and they start having nightmares when they spend the night in town. Uh, and eventually, through some, you know, interesting chain of events, whatever happens in the town, they make their way into, like, a cellar in some old building or something like that, and they find it full of dark smoke. And inside, they can hear something just... Well, they probably can't even hear something. Maybe they hear teeth chattering or something. They feel a dark, an evil lurking inside. Uh, and then this thing lunges at them from the... Lunges at them from the darkness. Uh, teeth gnashing. Its eyeball pierces into someone's mind, and they just drop to their knees in sheer terror... And then the, you roll for initiative, and you fight this thing, and it keeps putting you to sleep. Or, you know, you, the, the, the high wisdom characters, like the mage, have to keep wading into the fog to shake the fighters awake so that they can help um, the fight go on. You know, and this goes on, and maybe you try and, uh, you know, um, spill it out into the daylight so that you can uh, get through the darkness effect. I think this lends itself very well to a pretty epic battle. Um right here so the last step let's put a bit of block text on this thing um, Yeah, so this is kind of, the block text is kind of what you read when the knowledge check goes off, right? And the knowledge arcane or, some, or the bard does this researching thing. Um, uh, let's also do like a description text. Something like that. Some, so, so, dark fog surrounds you, when suddenly, from the darkness, lunges a man-sized fanged mouth. Above the mouth, a pair of horns suspend a single glowing eyeball in the dreamcatcher net, and then cut to actual artwork. Yeah, I think this, I, I think Ripster's, yeah, I think that you can totally build a whole adventure around this kind of creature if you want to. Just gonna put that note there. Uh, I guess we don't have a treasure note anymore, but uh, treasure would be a reward for getting rid for the reward from the town from getting rid of this freaking thing. Um, okay, so that is this creature monster, and hey, we're nearly at the end of the stream. Um, so uh, let us cut over to the.
All right. So again, all of this is Creative Commons, um, except for the artwork, which is the property of C. Hillier 17, although he's graciously permitted me to build a stat block for it. And if you ask, he might let you use it too in your own campaign, um, but you'll have to ask him that. Um, the stat block, though, the stat block, the block text, the description, and all these notes are Creative Commons 4.0. You can use them basically however you like, as long as you give me credit. Uh, thank you for your input chat, and uh, if anyone missed the first half of this, it will go up on YouTube later tonight. Good night, Twitch. See you next week.